Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, huge request for this video, Ibn Al-Qaim's poem to Christians. I don't know much about Ibn Al-Qaim other than that he was one of the greatest scholars of Islam. As always, I haven't watched the video yet, so I'm very curious to see what this poem is about. Let's have a look. O worshippers of Christ, we'd like your most wise to answer our question. Okay, so it is a challenge to the Christians. If our God was murdered by some people's actions, then what sort of God is this? And we wonder, was he pleased by what they did to him? If so, then blessed are they, for they must have achieved his pleasure. But if he wasn't pleased with them, then this must mean they overpowered him. True. So was the present entity left without a God, an all-hearing being who can hear prayers? And were the heavens vacated when he was placed under the earth and the dirt was above him? Yes, that was exactly my question, because if Jesus is God, that means that God orchestrated the crucifixion of himself, killed himself and then raised himself whilst being dead from the dead. And was the universe left without a God to manage it while his hands were being nailed down? That would be absolutely impossible because God is all aware, so eternally present. And why didn't the angels help him when they heard him cry out in pain? And how could any wooden beam hold up a true God while he is being fastened to it? Yeah, because we know that God is all powerful, so if he really wanted to free himself from the crucifixion, he could. So we would again have to assume that he actually wanted to be crucified, and then yes, he would be pleased with the people that crucified him. But yet again, the question is, of course, how would he raise himself then whilst being dead. And could any iron ever be brought to him so that it would be driven inside him and cause him pain? Even if we would assume that God incarnated within Jesus' body and was crucified and was experiencing everything like a human through Jesus, that would then mean that Jesus actually doesn't exist at all. Because we assume, of course, that we are soul within a human body. But even if Jesus fully contained God, like an avatar, like a vessel, fully filled with God's presence, because the Christian doctrine claims Jesus was 100% God and 100% man, that yet again would mean that Jesus doesn't exist. He's simply an empty vessel. God worked through him. God experienced this life through him as a human being. Then again, I have to ask, how do we come to the conclusion that there is a trinity? And how could ever his enemies' hands ever reach him so that they could whip him from behind? And did this Christ revive himself, or was there another God that brought him to life? Yes, yet again, this is why then you need the Trinity in order to explain this phenomena, because then you can say that the Father raised the Son. But then we don't have only one God. That's the problem. And how strange is it that a grave could be enclosed on a god? And even stranger is the womb that enclosed him before, which he remained inside for nine whole months in utter darkness, being fed by blood. Then he emerged from the womb as a small child, completely helpless, reaching out to be fed. 
Thus he ate, drank, and after he answered the call which comes naturally. So is this really a God? How exalted is Allah above the lies of the Christians, each of whom would ask about their fabrications? Or cross worshippers for what reason is someone exalted for accepting this and blameworthy for rejecting it? Yeah, it's an interesting picture that they chose there, because the question is of course always what happens to people that never heard about the crucifixion of Christ? Is there any way to salvation without the gospel? And is it not logical that we should break and burn what humiliated Christ and the one that made it? Yes, absolutely. If you see it only as a torture device for Jesus, you should destroy it. However, for Christians, it symbolizes salvation. This is where the sacrifice has been made on the cross. This is why they see beauty within that story. Since you claim that God was forcefully crucified upon it with his hands nailed to it. Fair point. Fair point. For truly what a cursed cross to carry. Which one should discard instead of kissing when he glanced upon it? For you claim the Creator was abused upon it, yet you appear to worship it. So are you one of his enemies? Yes, I absolutely understand the argument. However, coming from a Christian Orthodox perspective, I'm going to clarify the Christian view, even though nowadays I do not fully agree with it any longer. The crucifixion itself is seen as God's gift, as a showing of his absolute mercy and love. Him sacrificing his own son for us, or even further, God himself sacrificing himself yet again for us. This is a display of love for the Christians, and therefore they of course do not see themselves as the enemies of Christ. They see themselves as people that reach salvation through the sacrifice of God. As I said, it's not my position any longer, but I just want to clarify. <laughs> If you exalted the cross because it carried the Lord of all that exists, then why don't you also prostrate and exalt the grace? What do you mean? For it was the grave that held your so-called God in it. The cross symbolizes the crucifixion. The crucifixion, as I said, is crucial for salvation within Christianity. This is why Christians use the cross as a symbol, but they do not worship the cross. O worshippers of Christ, wake up, for this is what the matter is all about. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Thank you very much for the recommendation. It was a pleasure watching this. As I said prior, I don't enjoy all the Islamic videos nowadays. It is the current zeitgeist. To be honest, I don't like many things that are being produced nowadays. Be it music, be it movies, be it YouTube videos. Nowadays, there is not so much genuine content. However, a lot of quantity, of course. But as we know, quality always beats quantity. And listening to even al Qaim's poem here which is hundreds of years old was absolutely beautiful so now as you saw during the video i agreed pretty much with 99 percent of it aside from the cross worship because christians do not worship the cross it is simply a symbol it is as if we would say that the muslims worship the moon and the star symbol which is of course not the case other than that i fully agree for me it is very very fascinating to see that people back in the day already had those debates and now we have the same debates still on YouTube. It is quite amazing. A passage from the Quran, Allah guides who he wills. This is why I say that even in the future, we still will have religions that will debate, that will discuss. 
but the Quran says as well that we will be returned to our Lord and he will clarify it for us. By now you're probably wondering why I'm not converting to Islam already. Guys, I'm going to make a specific video, a separate video, in which I will explain point by point what my hurdles are, my thoughts, my possible misconceptions. I will clarify it all in a video and then we go from there. All right, but this is it for today's video. Please let me know in the comment section which video I should react to next. Leave me a like if you like the video. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.